Good evening. I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, The Real Money Doctor. It's currently Tuesday, just a little bit after 7 o'clock on March 24th. I um, want to do a daily recap here as to what's going on and how these things and current events are affecting you and your ability to get, protect, and enjoy your money, your life, and your retirement. As usual, for the last week or so, at least, um, the health issue is the biggest thing, and it's the first thing we talk about in these uh, shows right now. Right now, the United States is the third largest number of cases in the world um, behind Italy and China. The World Health Organization today said the U.S. could surpass Italy as the epicenter right now. Uh, the, the U.S. cases right now are just over 53,000. Uh, just over 53,000. About a third, a little bit more of those, are in New York State by itself. So far, the deaths have been the last report that I've got just a few minutes ago was 696 deaths. Yesterday was the first time that we had over 100 uh, cases in one day, or 100 deaths, actually. Um, 13,000 cases yesterday were reported. Right now, that number pretty much doubles every three days. Uh, what has been quiet, for some odd reason, nobody seems to notice, that New Jersey right now has the second number of highest cases, uh, right behind New York, ahead of the state of Washington. Um, again, they're confirmed cases in all 50 states. Right now, New York State is the epicenter of all this activity, just due to the numbers that they're having at this point in time. Um, what else is going on? Stay-at-home orders. There are at least 17 states right now that have stay-at-home orders. That number increases every day. It was 15 just a couple of days ago. It's 17 now. I'm assuming it's going to grow some more as this thing progresses. And of those 17 states with the stay-at-home orders, that affects about one-third of all Americans in the United States. About one-third. The stay-at-home orders are for non-essential workers. Uh, and again, that is totally up to um, the localities. So you want to check with your individual state what that means to them and how that affects you. Right now, Projections are still somewhere between 40 and 80% of the population are likely to be infected with this virus at some point in time. Recent data shows that of that 40 80%, probably 2% are likely to require hospitalization, which is good news and bad news, okay? Um, because that's still a large, large number. It really is a large number. Right now, people between the ages of 18 and 49 about 53% of those reported cases are in that age group. So they thought they were immune at some point in time because they thought it was an old person's thing. It is not. Okay, infants are dying. Okay, and again, if you're between 18 and 49, 53% of the cases that are reported are in that age group. So you're likely to be either infected and showing symptoms or you're likely to get them at some point in time. Now. What hasn't changed, but I do have a little bit more of an update, is that the virus can live up to nine days on inanimate surfaces. And that was okay. And then I did a little bit more checking. And what it actually ends up being is it's nine days at 86 degrees. They're assuming 86 degrees is room temperature. Um, I'm in the Philadelphia area. 86 is not room temperature. Um, what happens is as it gets colder, the virus can live for a longer period of time. And the current reporting I have, it can live up to 28 days with 39 degree temperature. So understand that things are happening out there. And if you're coughing on something, somebody else coughed on something, you have no idea. Because you can come back two days later and still pick this up. This is exceptionally contagious disease because the incubation period is up to 14 days before you show any signs and symptoms at all. So you can be carrying this thing and not know what's going on at all and be infecting people. Vaccine right now looks to be about 12 months out. There is a little bit of bright news here. Uh, someone has recently reported, I haven't tracked it down, early symptoms that you can detect yourself before normal other symptoms would show is a loss of smell and a loss of taste. Well, that makes perfect sense. Again, it's a respiratory virus. So the place you're going to pick it up at is your nose and your throat. And when they do the testing, they're testing your nose pretty much or the back of your throat. So if you have 
a relatively sudden cessation over a day or two of loss of smell or loss of taste or things that used to smell one way don't anymore or things that used to taste one way don't anymore there's a good chance something's going on and you might want to get that checked out or at least put yourself in isolation let somebody else know what's going on with you so they can check and see what happens um, the drug combination okay the treatments an Arizona man died okay um, he and his wife were in critical condition he died and I want to get this really really straight so I'm going to try and read some of this to you okay they took uh, chloroquine okay uh, that was one of the things that the president recommended the other day as looking as great promise okay um, now Banner Health said Monday that the couple in their 60s got sick within a half an hour of ingesting the additive that they put in with their food okay the man couldn't be resuscitated at all when he arrived at the hospital the woman was able to throw up much of the chemical that they had According to her, according to the woman himself, the wife, Trump kept saying it was basically pretty much a cure. Okay? And she goes on to say, don't take anything, don't believe anything, don't believe anything that the president says, his people, call your doctor. That's a direct quote from the woman who lost her husband. So again, go with science. The president may be a nice guy, I don't know. He's not in my house, I don't leave him alone with my wife or my kid, it's okay. But you know, he's trying to do one thing. What that thing may be, I don't know. I know what he should be doing is trying to uplift the nation with real facts and giving a real picture. What he's doing seems to be something different because it seems to be contradicted by the medical people. Now, another thing. The president was just on his conference about a half an hour ago, thereabouts, and he said... FEMA has delivered 4,000 ventilators to the state of New York. Well, the governor was on earlier today, and the governor says they have 400 vents. The governor said FEMA delivered him 400 vents, and New York needs 30,000 vents. Somewhere there's a, a big discrepancy here in the numbers. I don't know who you want to trust and who you want to believe. But the president said 4,000. The governor of New York said he only got 400. The government definitely knows he needs 30,000 vents. So there's a little bit of a problem here. And uh, I don't know where you want to go with that. Now, the Defense Production Act was signed last week, some point in time. The states are still competing against each other. The ventilators are not there. That act can force manufacturers to make these products because they say, okay, manufacturer A, I know you were doing cars. I want you to build ventilators right now. I'm going to give you a contract. I want all these ventilators in the next 15 or 20 days. And they know that no problems at all. They're going to put that out because they've got a paid contract ahead of time. Now, that's not being used right now. Now, I have got some reporting that they may be using the Defense Production Act for the making of some masks. I haven't checked that out yet. I will look into that a little bit more. Hospitals are still asking for donations of uh, personal protective equipment, which is really ridiculous. Again, this is 2020. We're probably one of the most industrialized countries in the world, and we're asking for donations for our hospitals at this point in time. Um, they continue to try to reuse disposable masks, trying to sterilize them. And I've been telling you that in past practice, that before this period of time anyway, that if you tried to reuse disposable equipment, you would likely be fired. But here we are, we're being forced to use it. Nurses are forced to carry these masks with them, keep them for a week almost. So, so much for that. On the politics side, uh, I mentioned it yesterday, when I mentioned it again today, Senator Rand Paul, while he was waiting for his test, okay, he was tested, he was waiting for his results, and because the testing was so slow, the results came, came back, you know, two or three days later, four days later. I don't know what the time frame was for the test that he took. But he took a test to see if he had COVID-19 or not, to see if he had coronavirus. While he was waiting for the results, he went and unlocked the padlocked gym at the Senate, exercised in the gym, swam the gym pool, and then had lunch with some GOP people, 
specifically uh, Senator Mike Lee and Mitt Romney, both of which are currently um, containing themselves at this point in time. Now, Senator Rand Paul happens to be a doctor. He's a physician. He should know better. He's been getting all the briefings, even if he didn't know any better. So that's the most irresponsible thing I've seen done in, in quite a while, especially from a health person. But that's what happens sometimes. Now, um, I've been mentioning for a week now about the story about crimson, uh, crimson Contagion. And you should take a peek at that. I will post a link again. Um, that's a story that the Health and Human Services Department in January through August of 2019 ran a simulation with tourists coming from, tourists or visitors from China going to O'Hare and it exposed the weaknesses in our system to respond to these type of uh, virus contagions. They showed in that study, again, this is President Trump's Health and Human Services Department. They showed in that study that took from January through to August what was going to happen. What they showed is what's happening right now. The government knew about the study. They paid for the study. It involved a number of different agencies. And then the report actually came out in October. So they knew about it then. For some reason, it was ignored or buried. One or the other. I don't know what happened. Maybe some combination of those things. But the government knew ahead of time and they didn't prepare for this. Now, I understand being optimistic in times of crisis and that's an important thing. You want to be self-assuring as much as possible. But there's a difference between that and real information. Um, Dr. Fauci was off the, um, the stage for basically two days in the White House briefings. He was back today. Uh, if you want real medical information, go to a real doctor. It just makes sense. It really does. Uh, testing has improved um, dramatically, but it's still grossly inadequate as to what they need. You still need to have certain conditions met. You need to be symptomatic before you get tested. And I don't have a problem with that because that makes perfect sense. They're trying to extend the number of tests because they don't have the number of tests that they need. This is going on from January. They knew about this in October because a study was released then. That contagion, uh, Crimson Contagion study was released then. That simulation was released at that point in time. They knew it in October. In January, the cases started coming in. They knew it in January. Here we are in mid-March. They still don't have sufficient testing. So it's a problem. It's going to continue to be a problem. Um, the president is hopeful that the country is going to be open for business by Easter. The medical professionals don't seem to be in the same vein of that by a lot. Again, the numbers are spiking. They're doubling every day. At least for the state of New York, they're doubling every day. If you don't have this contained at all, how are you ever going to predict an ending point at some point in time. You have to know where you're at. Right now, we're still trying to figure out where we're at with things. So it's a bit of a problem. Uh, a little bit of good news is that the bailout that we were talking about, again, they get to Tier 1 and Tier 2 were done relatively quickly. Tier 3 was the one that was in question for the last two or three days right now. And right now, the Senate is exceptionally close to things. Uh, it's going to be at least a $1.8 trillion bailout for both businesses and individuals. The Democrats were holding out uh, for an extended period of time on this because there were no protections in there for the working people. Um, the company got, the, the, the United States got screwed the last time with the big tax act. The benefits went to the top 2% and to the big corporations and they did corporate buybacks and they did more um, dividends and more uh, CEO compensation and very little got down to the workers very little well right now the smaller workers are the guys who are hurt the most at this point in time yes companies are running from month to month and they need some cash flow and they need some help not a problem with that 
but the individual workers are the ones who are getting screwed big time. What it looks like, okay, is that the original plan had basically a $500 billion slush fund that the Treasury could hand out to its friends and not disclose for well over a month or so. And that's pretty much what happened with the last bailout, that you never knew what was happening for close to seven or eight, nine months down the line. What the Democrats have held out for, and I believe is in the current legislation, which is not yet passed, I think they're writing it and should hopefully be passed later on tonight, I'm hoping, is that there's going to be much more accountability, limits on stock buybacks, if not an absolute no on it, I don't know, uh, limits on executive bonuses and dividends, more money going to individual people. Um, the current package seems to have extended and increased the amount of unemployment benefits. Okay. There's supposed to be eight weeks of payroll help. I don't know exactly what that means just yet. And small business grants once the whole thing is approved. Now, it's not done yet. The markets loved it today, though, without a doubt in the world. The markets went up um, by over 2,000 points. It's 11% jump today in the markets. The markets liked that. They thought it was going to happen. However, once it's actually approved, which could be later on tonight, the big question then is how much... How the money actually gets out, how does it get out to the individual people, and how soon does the money actually get out? How is it going to get distributed, and how soon is it going to get out? So that is the big question at that point in time. We really don't know yet. Now, how does all this affect you? Because okay. that's really what this is all about. The health and the politics, those are all nice things. They're, they're out here somewhere in a never-never land, but what does that actually mean to you? Well, again, there's 17 states with stay-at-home orders affecting one-third of all Americans at this point in time. Um, stay at home, you've got to check with the state to see exactly what happened with that, what that means to you. Chances are, there's a good chance you're at home. Okay. Uh, some DAs and police departments, again, are not prosecuting. Some are not even arresting some nonviolent criminals. That makes sense. They don't have a problem with that. A lot of court systems are shut down at this point in time. Uh, if you know lawyers... They're considered non-essential for some reason, at least in the state of Pennsylvania. I don't know why. And they're told, no, you stay home. Uh, doctors and other health care workers are starting to test positive. Uh, medical staff shortages are coming in the next week or two without a doubt in the world. Um, right now, 100 New York City cops tested positive. 100 New York City cops tested positive. One police officer in Detroit, city of Detroit, already died from the virus. Now, state of New York, California, a couple other states have what is called a, a, a medical core, a reserve core, and that is comprised of retired doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals. And these people are volunteering. That's really, really nice that they're volunteering. However, if you go and you look at things, the people that are volunteering are the people at most at risk because they're older of getting this virus and being seriously affected by it, which increases the need for personal protective equipment, which they don't have. The hospital people can't run like this forever and a day. Okay. You get burned out relatively quickly. You can only do so many shifts. Your own immune system gets broken down, and you're working with less than optimal equipment by a lot. You're exposed every day. The police officers, again, exposed every day. So things are happening. Uh, that's how it's affecting you. Again, 48% of the people are going to be infected at some point in time. Only 2% of those are, require, are actually going to require hospitalization, but that's still a large number. It really is. And I just saw something today that was rather, really, really interesting. It was a little meme on Facebook. It basically says, don't change your behavior to avoid infection. Assume you're infected and change your behavior so you don't transmit it to somebody else. Made perfect sense. I like that. I'll be reposting that tomorrow. Um, but that makes perfect sense. Now, understand that all this shelter-in-place, stay-at-home stuff is only to slow up the number of people that are hitting the hospitals. Because if everybody got sick at once, 
the hospital would crash almost overnight. They're not that bad yet. Uh, the governor of Illinois, I believe it was Illinois, um, just did a stay-at-home order for his state. If he didn't, they expected their hospitals to crash within about a week. Hopefully, it'll buy a little bit more time. That's all the stuff does. It slows things down. Again, we're day nine of the government 15-day plan here. The president is retrying to start to, trying to restart the economy by Easter. Okay. Uh, that's what he's, he wants to do. Um, the medical professionals are not quite certain that's going to happen by a lot. Uh, today, the Olympics were postponed okay, until 2021. They were supposed to happen in Japan. They got shut down. Um, some good news, CVS has openings for 50,000 people, 50,000 workers. CVS has openings. They need drivers. They need people to stock shelves. Okay, If you're out of work, you might want to check with CVS or other pharmacies. There could be some work available there. Um, with the stimulus package that is anticipated to be signed later on tonight, if it's passed, okay, if it's passed and signed, there should be some direct deposit checks happening, which would be very helpful, obviously. Uh, they've increased the amount of the payments and extended the unemployment benefits also. Uh, most places still have, have been shut down for at least two weeks. Schools are still not projected to reopen until the fall, a lot of them. Um, the president hopes that, you know, by Easter, people are going to be in churches. Okay. Realistically, with the medical professionals, the way I'm seeing things at this point in time, there's less than a 50% chance of that happen, happen, yeah, happen, actually happening at all. Uh, what do you do now on a personal level? Again, I've been saying to you for a while now, sit back, check your retirement situation, go to some cash in there. Don't need to withdraw it, but go to cash right now. Still not certain the market is bottomed yet. It's getting closer, but you don't know what's going to happen because these things are supposed to happen. But as the medical numbers go up, the market's going to get spooked some more because more people are going to be out of work. And it's going to have a, a big cascading effect on things. So I don't know when. Again, I have no crystal ball. I've been a certified financial planner for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or so. Been in business for over 30. But I have no crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. And I teach all my students, we don't try and predict. We just react to what's happening. Right now, cash is not a bad position to be in any of your retirement accounts. I talked to one more woman today. Nice enough person. It's a nurse. I think she had 39 years in the field. And she had $400,000 saved up in her 403B and her 401k plans. Okay. That was before the market crashed. She took pretty much a 30% hit. Um, I talked to somebody else uh, the other day, and they had already pulled out and put a large position of their stuff in cash, which made perfect sense. It really did. I think I talked to him yesterday morning, in fact. Um, he liquidated his stuff, put it into cash. So cash is not a bad place. Is the market going to come back time, anytime soon? I don't know. I really don't. I don't expect it to come back anytime really soon. And if it, when things stabilize, which could be another week or two or three, I don't expect it to come back too quickly either at that point in time. I was very impressed it did it a 12, almost a 12% jump today. But again, uh, at this level, it bounces up and down and it may stay here for a little while and drop back down. You just don't know. Um, there's some people that you want to be thankful for. Store clerks delivery people, your mailman, okay, truck drivers, okay, you got a lot of people that are still servicing everything in the back end of things that you don't see on a daily basis. Okay. They're doing a lot of work. They're exposing themselves to a lot of risk, okay? Be thankful for these people. Um, when you're at home, and a lot of people are at home right now, you have to be exceptionally careful in your own home. Outside of the mental things that are happening right now. I'm going to get to the stress in just a second. Okay. You need to watch your diet, vitamin supplements, watch your hydration. But when you're at home, there is a bigger chance of physical injury. Accidents happen in the home more than any place else. Now you're spending so much time at home, you got to be really careful about physical accidents in the house. Okay. You want to do some type of exercise whenever you can. 
very important. Up and down steps is really novel as long as you can go up and down steps. It may not be the safest thing for you to do. It might be safer on a flat surface and just throw on a YouTube and do some type of dancer size or something or other. Yoga is nice. It's a non-impact type of situation. And again, it's on one level, so it's harder to get hurt. It's not impossible, but it's just it's more difficult to get hurt when you're doing yoga and you're doing um, some jazzercise type stuff if you do it low key and you're on a flat surface. Um, okay. The isolation right now is what people are not used to. They're used to going to work, seeing people. Even if they don't like the people, they see the people. Okay. You go to stores, you get a coffee, you get a Wawa or Cumberland Farms or wherever you go. And you get coffee, you get donuts, wherever. You see people at lunch. You see people driving in cars as you go back and forth to work. You don't like half of these people because they're slowing up traffic that you want to get someplace, but you're seeing people. You have interactions with people. You know, it's just as, you know, leaning on the horn. If you're at home right now, you don't have any of that. And that isolation that you feel is real. It has a real effect on you. Okay. Not only mentally, but because of your mental stress of that situation, you're going to have physical effects also, which puts you more at risk for any type of virus you might be exposed to. So try and take care of yourself. Now is a good time to learn about some introspection. Sit there in a quiet space and think about your life. What do you want to do with your life? Not the next couple weeks, that's important, but long term, what do you want to do with your life? Are you going in the direction you'd like to be going? Did you make any of those long term decisions as to what you want to do long term? Very important. Okay. Your daily journal is a nice thing. Okay. Um, it gives you a chance to express yourself, even if you're by yourself. And you write down how you're feeling, what you think is different from now to yesterday, the day before, what you're hoping for in the future. Okay. These things are nice to know. It helps you improve your mental stability. Meditation is a nice thing to do at this point in time. Okay. Uh, what else can you do? Well, I had mentioned before, I posted the link before, I'll post it again on a Yale that offer a free course, The Science of Well-Being. That sounds like an interesting thing. It's one of their most popular free courses. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. It gives you a better perspective on the world and on yourself. Okay, I'll, I will, again, post a link. Time to reassess your job situation, obviously, because Plan A just fell off a cliff. If it comes back, I don't know. If it comes back for you, you don't know either. But now's an ideal plan time to have a plan B for yourself, for your finances, for your life. Think about those things. Now's a good time. If I can help you with that, that would be great. Okay. I don't know that I can, but you can go to drrousenow.com and you can see what I'm doing for other people. If it, you like it, that's fine. If I can help you, we can have a discussion and we can see if I can let you in the program or not. I don't know. Uh, what else can you do? Okay, people are really pulling it together big time right now. Again, the doctors and the, well, the uh, healthcare workers are really volunteering with this reserve corps, but they are putting themselves at a lot of risk because they're in there every day face to face. They can't social distance when you're playing doctor and nurse. It doesn't work that way. You're pretty much hands on. And these people in the reserve corps are the older of the doctors and nurses, they've already been retired. So these are the people most at risk. The existing hospital people, they keep going to work every day. Some of them working back to back shifts because other people are dropping out. They're sick. Okay. They're in there every day. Even if they don't get sick immediately, the stress of all that puts them at more risk on top of the poor response with the protective equipment that they don't have and the mess that they don't have. Okay. These people, it's just a matter of time before they start crumbling and you have more health care problems because you have no one to take care of everybody else. Okay. Uh, check on your families and neighbors at this point in time. Again, especially the elderly. Um, you're feeling isolated. They felt isolated beforehand. They're feeling a lot more isolated right, right now. Uh, other things you can do. Again, I mentioned the free course from Yale. Okay. The science of well-being. Uh, yesterday I posted a link, I'll post it again today. There are 450 Ivy League colleges that have free courses that you can take online right now. 
um, someone posted something. I saw it today. I'm posting a link to it. Uh, I thought it was excellent. If you've got kids at home, okay, this is something that it was a site for teachers, but they have tons of free activities and learning things that you can do with your kids at home. Uh, my wife, Dr. Terry, does her reading at 7.30. Um, she's probably doing that right now. Um, but that's handy for, for smaller kids. She does that every day. Um, there's also a site that I just found today for a virtual marine biology camp. So if your kids like that, if you like marine biology at all, I'm going to post a link to that. So we have a lot of links I'll be posting later on today. Uh, the one link I had yesterday um, for the ideal business, the keys to an ideal business, I did not get that posted. My apologies for that. The website that I used for that before because I retired and I shut that business down, uh, that website has also been shut down. So I have to repost that. As soon as I do, I will, as soon as I get that back up on, on a web page, I'll put the link in yesterday and today's links at the bottom when I post this on YouTube. So again, I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, the Real Money Doctor. If I can help you any way, shape, or form, please email me, uh, private message me, let me know what your questions are, your concerns are, and I'll see if I can research things and address them in the following show. It will be tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Thank you for your time.